You've seen the title of the video. And before we dive into this, I just want to mention this is not an unboxing channel. This is not going to be the best unboxing video you will ever see. Of course not. It's going to be far from it. But I am going to be unboxing Fade Mark II by Audio Imperia. There are only a few differences, but we'll get into that in a moment. Let's check it out. <laughs> I opened the box from the wrong side. <laughs> My bad. All right, let's do the grand reveal from the, the side that it should be. Look at that, brand new. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, now let's take a quick look at the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II. The first thing you'll notice is the wood looks slightly different, but it's actually all still walnut. And it's from the same batch of wood, but there will be subtle differences. That means that almost every fade unit is going to have its own unique look, because with real wood, you're going to have differences. Another difference between these two is the faders. Both Mark 1 and Mark 2 use high-end faders. The Mark 1 faders are smooth, but the Mark 2 faders are just that little bit smoother. Audio Imperial had to change the faders for the Mark 1 due to supply issues at the time in 2021. The faders they originally wanted for Mark 1 were discontinued, and the only way to get them was at a ridiculously high minimum order quantity. So they went to the next best alternative option, which is what ended up in the Mark 1. Now let's have a quick listen to the faders on the Mark 1 compared to the Mark 2. Another thing is the Mark II faders feel a bit more stable, whereas on the Mark I they're a bit more loose. They just feel a little bit more solid in the Mark II. Now there's one more thing I wanted to mention about the Mark II actually. The Mark II has a slightly different faceplate which is now matte black which means you're going to have less thumbprints on it. And something else I wanted to mention, both Mark I and Mark II of Fade are not using anything prefabricated. It's all high-end components for longevity so that it can last as long as possible. So that's why everything is as custom as it can be. Custom faceplate, the wooden side panels, the silicone buttons. With the Mark II, there's also a slightly different weight of the silicone button, so they're easier to push down. The screen was sourced, but Audio Imperial didn't cut any corners with the screen. It's still super premium. So basically, nothing is prefab. It's custom made for this specific purpose and not using off-the-shelf parts. Audio Imperial took everything they learned from the Mark I to improve the Mark II, and a lot of it you don't actually see because there's a lot of things under the hood, like improvements on the circuit board. Mark I is still a premium product, and the Mark II is just the next evolution. Now moving on I'm going to try and answer this question of why do you need a MIDI CC controller? Whether it's a product like Fade by Audio Imperia or a product by a different company, whatever it is, do you actually need it? Does it really help you improve your orchestral mock-ups? What exactly does it do? I'm going to try and answer all of that in this next segment of this video as quickly, efficiently and in depth as possible in this short amount of time. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now in my digital audio workstation, which is Logic Pro X. I'm using array of strings from Audio Imperia to create this short little mock-up to show you how important it is to use MIDI CC data. Let's have a quick listen through this little strings idea, and then we'll talk about all this a bit more. Now, let's have a quick look at what's going on here. So, if I just take Violins 1, for example, and I'll go to this, let's have a look what is actually happening. We're controlling modulation, which is CC1. Modulation is based on the dynamics. So if I play something on the strings here, this is with the fader on CC1 all the way at the bottom. This would be the mod wheel on your keyboard. And as I move it up, you will hear the change in dynamics.
With something like Fade by Audio Imperia, you have a hundred millimeter threads, right? Fader threads. So you can really get that kind of dynamic range. You can really feel how easy it is to transition through that smoothly. Using something like a mod wheel on a MIDI keyboard, it's a little bit trickier to do that. So when I was just using uh, MIDI keyboards in the past before I had this, oftentimes I would actually draw in these MIDI CC curves. As you can see here, this is what's happening here, right? We're just going up a little bit and then down, up, up, rising all the way up, and then we go to this part. This sort of thing you could play in. I just want to be clear about this. Whereas this stuff, right, these kind of MIDI CC curves, unless you're an absolute expert, which I'm not using these kind of things, you might be able to create that sort of, those, those curves that quickly. The reality is that even if you're using something like Fade by Audio Imperial with these 100 millimeter threads on the faders, you're still probably gonna go and refine it if you're doing really complex programming like this. So let's just take a listen to this on its own. And now what's also happening here is not just that, you also have vibrato, okay? So vibrato is controlled by CC21. As we bring the vibrato up, you can hear the intensity of how the player is playing with their hand. Vibrato all the way down. Vibrato all the way up. So there you have that. And as you can see here, I'm doing a similar thing uh, with the dynamics, right? I'm going up, swelling up and down like this. But with the vibrato, we're doing the same thing, but we're actually doing more dramatic curves because I don't want the dynamics to change, like the players to play really intense yet here. So I'm doing these kind of smaller arcs on the dynamics, but on the vibrato, I wanted to accent that a bit more. So I'll just solo that here. And then notice on this next section, I'm actually keeping the vibrato the same throughout. I'm not adjusting that because it's not really necessary to try and on this kind of passage to do all these crazy curves with the vibratos, but the dynamics are doing that, the most of the heavy lifting here. If I get rid of all this CC data, by drawing over it like this. This is how it would sound. It doesn't sound bad, but it sounds a lot better when we have it carved out like this, especially when you go between all three parts like this. And they all have, you know, slightly different curves of what's being played. All of that just adds up to a really nice kind of performance. More realistic, right? Now, this is the original string sketch. As you can see here, when I programmed this in, I had this idea of this kind of, it's based around this falling pattern that's going down. It's basically just a C minor chord going down in different inversions. So you start here, you go down and you're changing basically. So it's like C, E flat, G, then it's G, C, E flat, then E flat, G, C, and so on, down, down, changing between violins one, two, and violas. So the blue here represents the violins one just in this section, not this, but just this section here that we're focusing on now. Violins two are the green and violas are the yellow. That's how I kind of separated out in my mind. I changed the velocity of the notes after playing this in. And obviously I quantized this in because there's no way you'd be able to play this in super tight on just a sustains patch. So this is just sustains from Jaeger. Obviously it's just a sustains patch, so it's not gonna sound as good as Legato's, but also you can see here that I just have those dynamics just completely straight like this, okay? Nothing's changing, nothing's being accented. And then if we compare that to here, where the dynamics in all the parts are being adjusted, handcrafted, And this is using the new, newest version of Araya, which has some really fantastic legatos now, the Araya update that came out. I don't know if it was last year or sometime before that, but yeah, really fantastic, really enjoying using that recently actually.
Let's talk about general kind of workflow. Probably the most important thing when you're writing for things like strings, brass and woodwinds is dynamics, CC1 modulation. I'll be your modulation wheel on a MIDI keyboard. This is super important. This is what's shaping how the player is playing, whether it's soft or really loud and aggressive. That's kind of how you're shaping the sound with the dynamics, right? Whereas CC11, which is expression, that's basically just volume of the actual patch that you're using from zero to 100. So generally I'll keep that all the way up at 127, right? All the way up. And then I will only adjust that if when I'm going down, for example, in this ending part here in the violas, if I felt that wasn't, or all of these parts actually, if I didn't feel that was enough, I would just go into the expression and adjust it on CC11 and I would keep it, you know, it would be similar to how vibrato is like this all the way up. And then I would just bring it down at the end or even later, just like this, a slight curve to help exaggerate the kind of dynamic range of what the dynamics are doing. But most of the time, I would say just focus on dynamics, get that sounding good and then expression, use that to add more dynamics to the dynamics if it's needed. Uh, that's probably gonna give you the more realistic approach rather than doing loads of crazy stuff with expression because then you're just adjusting like the actual volume of the instrument like in a recording rather than how the player is playing. That's what the dynamics are doing. And then you've got CC21, which is vibrato. Those three are probably the most important ones to kind of have and bear in mind. On strings, a lot of the time, I don't actually adjust the vibrato. I'll keep it all the way up. Just with the kind of stuff I write in, it works fine. I know some people like to adjust vibrato a lot, so you absolutely can do that, but just be mindful that as you're crossfading between a lot of vibrato and no vibrato, it can sometimes sound a bit strange if it's exposed, you know, just like a solo line, but if you've got it in the context of a more kind of uh, fleshed out orchestral arrangement, it can sound good. So try it out. But those are kind of the best three things to focus on, I would say. CC1, dynamics, CC11, expression, CC21, vibrato. CC1, dynamics is gonna be the most important thing to getting a good, realistic, expressive performance out of these virtual instruments, sample libraries, whatever you wanna call them. And also bear in mind that using something like Fade by Audio Imperia is fantastic. It is an absolutely beautiful piece of kit it is so nice to work with, it's so smooth. You have these 100 millimeter threads on the faders, which is fantastic. You can transition between the dynamic layers really smoothly and seamlessly, which is fantastic. But then again, you can also do things by hand. I kind of do a mix of the two. I think that's the best workflow personally. I couldn't, I, I mean, I could do everything by hand if I needed to, just with um, using, you know, like a mouse and drawing stuff in. It's not as inspiring as playing it in live on the keyboard and, you know, changing things on the faders, but it is doable. So, whereas if you were just doing the faders and not drawing anything, I think you would also struggle to get nuance in sections like this, where you really need to get in there and microscopically almost like adjust the CC curves. But this honestly is the secret to getting fantastic orchestral mock-ups. Of course, your arrangement and orchestration, all that needs to be good, but this will make such a difference to how, how expressive the performance is and how realistic it can sound. That's pretty much it. I don't wanna make this any longer than it needs to be, but if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I hope you found this useful. And yeah, thanks to Audio Imperial for Fade Mark II. It is absolutely fantastic. And I highly recommend it if you are looking for a dedicated MIDI CC controller like this. This has gotta be one of the best things out there. So check it out if you're interested. I'll leave a link to it down below. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Cheers, bye.